Hi guys. So uh, today what we're going to do is that we're going to talk about some concepts. Now why is that? Because I have been getting comments and uh, questions about some topics uh, that I would like to cover separately because they are more like a basics and concepts oriented topics. So one of them is 5G throughput optimization basics and uh, I have been, been asked questions about scheduler, about data scheduling, about control scheduling, how the blur, the block error rate comes into play, what are their interactions. So what I thought is that I will do a, a few sessions, a short few, few short sessions and cover these topics. So the first one that I want to cover, uh, which is like the building block of all the schedulers, scheduler algorithms, is uh, the data scheduling part. Now before we go into the details, we need to understand some basics uh, and most important basics for any scheduler algorithm are the CQI and the MCS. Now, um, what is CQI and what is MCS? What is their interaction be with each other and why we need that? So let's take an example here. Let's say I have a 5G cell and I have four different mobiles. One mo This mobile is in near the cell so it will be in very good radio conditions. This mobile is at the cell edge, very far away from the cell. So it's not in good radio conditions. You can say that it's in poor radio conditions. Now how the UE tells the G-node B or how the G-node B finds out the radio conditions uh, of each UE, of each mobile. So that is where the CQI comes into play. So each mobile, it uh, calculates its SINR in downlink. So it knows, knows its downlink SINR and based on the SINR, it, it calculates its CQI. So CQI is Channel Quality Indicator. So as per 3GPP specs, the CQI uh, ranges from 0 to 15. And 0 means um, low, 15 means high. So as if CQI is high, that means you are in good radio conditions. So for instance, in this case, this U, uh, mobile sends CQI 5. That means it is in bad radio conditions this mobile is sending CQI 12 so that means this mobile is in good radio conditions so each mobile will send its CQI to the G node B and the G node B after reading the CQI will find out whether the mobile is in good radio conditions or medium radio conditions or bad radio conditions now based on this the G node B will allocate an, an MCS Now MCS is a modulation and coding scheme it ranges from 0 to 31 and it also somehow you can say that a smaller value is uh, bad and a bigger value, uh, higher value is good throughput. So, um, but if, if I categorize them into four major categories, four major types, you can say that we have QPSK, which is used for poor radio conditions. We have 16 QAM, which is used somewhere in medium, medium or medium bad. We have 64 QAM, which is medium, medium good and we have 256 QAM which is used in very good radio conditions. So apparently and uh, as you can understand with 256 QAM I can get the highest throughput. So for instance this mobile is getting 256 QAM so it will be getting let's say 1 Gbps. This mobile at CQI 9 the G-Node B gives it 64 QAM for instance so it will be maybe getting around 700 Mbps. Then this mobile sending CQI 7 the G-Node B assigns it modulation of 16 QAM so maybe it will be getting somewhere 450, 500 Mbps. And with QPSK, which is at the cell edge, with CQI 5 and getting QPSK from G node B, it might be getting 200 Mbps. So that, um, just an example, just to uh, give you an example how this all sums up. Now, uh, so far it's simple. The, uh, any mobile, it calculates SNR, sends the CQI, and G node B converts the CQI to a modulation and assign the data and the user gets the data rate. Now the problem comes into into this um, that when there are multiple UEs, for instance we have Samsung mobile, we have iPhones, we have LG, we have Op Oppo, uh, so we have multiple mobiles and each mobile might have uh, a different um, interpretation of CQI. So for instance, let's say this mobile was in this area which was uh, something where the, it can easily sustain 256 QAM and it was sending CQI 12. Now another mobile from another company, maybe another chipset, it is also sending CQI 12 even though it is slightly in a worse conditions where it will not be able to support 256 QAM. But because the G node B is getting CQI 12 from this mobile and also from this mobile, the G node B will assign the same modulation, which is 256 QAM, to both of them. 
So both of these mobiles, because they are reporting the same CQI, will get the same modulation. Now what will happen? That this mobile might be able to sustain it easily, while this mobile might start to show higher error rate, higher NAC rate, or decoding failures. So this is where the concept of blur control comes into play. What's blur? Blur is the block error rate. So this is where the concept of link adaptation comes into play. So let's understand now uh, from a, a simple flow graph how this looks like. So in downlink, the GNOD B is sending certain reference signals, which are all normally CSI reference signals, channel state information, reference signals, and channel state information, inter interference, manner interference measurement reference signals. Now based on these uh, reference signals, each mobile calculates its CSI report, which is actually CQI, rank indicator, and PMI, the pre-coding matrix indicator. The G node B, then once it reads the CQI, the CQI report, the CSI report, it converts it to the downlink data scheduling and allocates the corresponding MCS. So for instance, if CQI is good, let's say uh, in that case, uh, we say it's uh, 10, then the uh, G node B is assigning an MCS of let's say 64 gram. Now, if the UE is able to decode it properly, then the GNODB can actually assign it a higher MCS. Let's say it says that, okay, because it is decoding it successfully, maybe it can actually even take up from 64 quam, it can even sustain 256 quam. So it will allocate it a higher MCS. If the UE is not able to decode it, it will send a NAC saying HARC negative acknowledgement, saying that I could not decode this, then the G node B can actually reduce the MCS. If it is 64 quam, it can give it 16 quam, and so and, and vice versa. So the idea behind this is that different mobiles can give, um, on the same radio conditions, give different CQIs. And this uh, kind of a blur control actually makes the uh, throughput and the channel conditions much much better so how it does that that you have an outer loop now so the cqi uh, is based on the inner loop so the ue the mobile calculate cqi send it to the g node b g node b based on that cqi gives an allocation of mcs and if the user cannot decode it it can reduce the mcs and if the user keeps decoding it, it can increase the MCS to get the most optimum scheduling value. So that is that is what the 5G data scheduling or even LTE data scheduling works um, in a nutshell. It is similar in um, all the vendors. It is uh, the same idea everywhere, but this is important to understand uh, before we go further into the scheduling details. Now, um, what can we do? How can we, let's say, improve our throughput or uh, um, improve the user experience. So for that, let's understand it with the, the concept of a flow graph. Now, uh, if, if we have a flow chart, um, the G node B gets a CSI report for the CQI from the UE and based on that, it will convert it to an MCS and then it allocates the MCS to the user and estimate the block error rate. Now, the block error rate has a target Usually, as per 3GPP, uh, it is usually 10%. So most of the vendors use 10% as a, as a target. So that means that if the block error rate of the of the UE is less than 10%, then what will happen is, let's say the UE is uh, having a block error rate of 7%. The target over here is 10%. So 7% is greater than target? No, it will go here. So the system says that it has room to increase the MCS. So it will increase MCS, that will increase throughput. If a, a UE or a mobile is reporting a block error rate of let's say 12%, now that is greater than the target of 10%, so it will be yes here, and we will have a decrease of MCS, right? So uh, the idea here is to maintain the block error rate at a target. So what will happen if I can increase the target? So if I, let's say, increase the target to 12 itself, what will happen is that there are more chances to increase the MCS. That means higher throughput. If I make it, let's say, say eight, the eyeballer target is eight, that means there are more chances to decrease the MCS. And that means lower throughput, but better block error rate, right? So there is a compromise between them. 
and uh, we need to find that compromise and we need to tune that to actually find the most optimum throughput value. So uh, what we'll do is that in the next session, we'll talk about the eye blur, how uh, we can actually uh, know which eye blur target we should have and which eye blur targets are generally used uh, in which radio conditions and why is that. So uh, up till now, just understand uh, the basics. The basics, I will just sum up again. A user, a mobile, calculates its SINR and then it converts the SINR to CQI and send the CQI to the G node B or the E node B, which is same in both the conditions. The G node B will convert the CQI to a modulation, which is an MCS, and allocate the MCS to the mobile. If the mobile is able to decode the MCS successfully, it can increase the MCS further. The G node B can increase the MCS further. If the mobile says that it cannot decode the MCS, for instance, it will send negative acknowledgements and the G node B can decrease the MCS. So that is the basic concept between the data scheduling and how um, it works out in different um, domains. But uh, how we can improve that, uh, we can increase the throughput using the eye blur target and which eye blur target to be used and what is eye blur by itself. This is what we, we will discuss in the next short session. So stay tuned. Have a nice day.